Hi, this is Stacy with Stalking Horse. Welcome to our channel. Gonna talk to you guys today about the new E&M 2021 office visit guidelines. So we're actually gonna do a three-part series. We're gonna cut it up. We're gonna have one video about the number and complexity of problems addressed, a second video or part two that's gonna be about data, and then a third video or part three that's gonna be about risk. And so we're gonna give some tips and pointers on documentation and coding for each of those three areas. And also don't forget that the AMA put out some technical corrections. Um, so make sure you check those out online. If you don't know where to go, go ahead and click the links on this page. One will take you to the AMA's page where it will give you the new updated guidelines with those technical corrections. And then another link will be there to take you to that AMA table, that grid, that chart that you really need to become familiar with to be successful with documenting and coding uh, with these new rules for office visits. All right, see you soon. Welcome to our channel. This is Stacy with Stalking Horse. I'm so glad to see you guys again. So this is part three. So wrapping up about the E&M 2021 office visit guideline changes and updates. And so again, we're going to share some tips with you guys on the level of risk. So basically talking about um, the risk of complications and or morbidity and mortality of patient management. So with that being said, really there's a couple of key pieces in with risk that have been um, difficult with this transition. So previously we had a lot of examples within the AMA um, or the CPT, you know, the old grid from uh, 2020 and prior. In risk we had a lot of examples under low and moderate and high and all of the examples have actually been removed that were under low and it's it's blank now so again if you take a look at the guidelines the chart and if you don't have the chart please click on the link and in our our little channel here and you will see a link that'll take you to the ama chart and i recommend laminating or putting it in a folder and keeping it with you all the time um so if you don't have that, click on it. If you do have it, you'll notice that the low in risk is actually empty now. So why is that? Why, why don't we have examples there? Um, the AMA actually commented about that in a symp symposium. You can find that information online as well. But we still have some of the old examples under um, moderate or level four risk, there are still some old examples and they still have yet prescription drug management there, which we're actually gonna get into in a, in a moment talking about. So we do have some moderate and some high examples, but again, this is a challenge because the whole reason that they've made these changes, you know, the AMA actually commented on their site about, you know, these are like basically groundbreaking changes and we're moving away from providers like using check boxes and just adding a bunch of voluminous information into the note to now uh, coding based on how physicians think, right? But how do you know how someone else is thinking? You don't know unless they tell you. And the, the way that providers tell us what they're thinking is through their documentation, right? So it's super important within risk because uh, what the clinician, what the provider thinks of as low, moderate, or high risk for a particular patient may be different from what we really see documented. I mean, if you think about how hard it is, if you put yourself in the shoes of a clinician, of a physician, think about how hard it is to literally document your whole thought process, right? Like, it's harder than you think. I challenge you, try it one day, okay? Try it, because because I have. So that's why, you know, it gives me some empathy and understanding that this is a huge transition and documentation isn't always easy. So we are now essentially um, are trying to read the minds of the providers um, through their documentation and leveling risk. And so risk varies from patient to patient. And what I mean by that is, if you have two patients, one that's 25 years old and extremely healthy, uh, but coming in because maybe they have 
an acute illness and they may need some maybe over-the-counter medication, right? So that patient may have a certain level of risk, uh, maybe, maybe a low risk for having that over-the-counter medication uh, for patient management. However, if you have a 80-year-old um, patient that comes in that has multiple comorbidities, um, and is being told to take a, a particular over-the-counter medication, they may have a higher risk of taking that over-the-counter medication, obviously, than the 25-year-old. Um, or even two 25-year-olds may have different levels of risk. So it's really about taking the whole note into consideration, looking at the whole picture of the patient, and having that discussion with providers, and if you're a provider listening, it's really about your documentation. And there's no shame in telling us what the risk is, right? So in certain cases, that may be super helpful. So even stating, you know, the risk of the patient taking this medication is, you know, whatever it is, moderate due to this reason, or this patient is at high risk for this treatment due to what the reasons are. That helps us to rule out any question of what level of risk in a particular situation is there, right? So we can kind of see how helpful that can be. So usually our um, hesitancy with risk in leveling comes between that low and moderate, right? So level three versus level four risk. And a lot of that boils down to prescription drug management and or procedures being ordered or thought about or what have you. It comes between that. Because conversely, just like we talked about an over-the-counter medication being prescribed or being recommended for two different patients having a different level of risk, Conversely, it may also be the same for a patient who's coming in for a follow-up that's been on a particular medication for a long time. This particular medication doesn't maybe have a lot of risk for problems in this particular patient's case. So perhaps it's not always a moderate risk. Uh, perhaps that's the case. So again, seeing that through the documentation will be very helpful, right? So that's a tip there with prescription drug management. The other part of that is, Many times I'll see where a provider will refer a patient for um, perhaps testing by another provider or refer them with the idea of a test in mind. So uh, GI is a good example. Perhaps this patient, they're being referred because they, may, they need an endoscopy, at least in the opinion of the referring physician. So talking about why you're referring them is important, right? Because that also tells us the level of risk that this for treatment that this patient may be undergoing, um, why you're referring them, you know, what risk does that pose to them to have a complication between now and, and when they go see this specialist. So elaborating on why they're being referred, not just the diagnosis and that you're referring them, but why that referral is important is super helpful to, to get us to know where to put them in this table of risk. So, um, Again, it's really about the documentation and the details, right? So get those details in there. Really, we want to get to a point where we all feel comfortable, coders, auditors, and clinicians alike, providers alike, looking at this and feeling comfortable with where our level sits. If there's a question about what level it is, that means that, again, either our documentation isn't as good as we thought or... Perhaps we need a little bit more education, look back at these rules, and these guidelines are new. And don't forget that there's technical corrections out there now. So if your guidelines, if your copy is from before March 9th, you're going to want to click on the link that we have in here to get yourself a new set of guidelines because there were those technical corrections that you may find helpful. So uh, again, if you have any questions about risk, please feel free to comment below and we will do our best to either create another video or comment back to you. And if you have any requests for future sessions, also please add that into the comments. And you heard it straight from the horse's mouth.